All right, so you're you're up there in Bristol. Let's let's get a little preview of the playoffs tonight. Obviously, one through four anticipation. Georgia, Michigan, two. I mean, we'll start with there. Like, is there a chance with the big win versus Ohio State last week, you maybe see the Wolverines moving to the number one spot? Yeah, I mean, I think you saw. Um, you know, like there's some people that have Michigan one, and I, I I I get it. That was a big win at Columbus. They went to Columbus and and smashed them in the face. And Reese is raising his hand, so Reese has Michigan you know, number one. So I, I think you could definitely um, make that argument. I, I, would, I wouldn't make that argument because I think non-conference from that standpoint, Michigan played, um, you know, a bunch of cupcakes, not real good schedule. Georgia challenges themselves and plays Oregon. And I think that, I mean, they didn't really challenge themselves, but you know what I'm saying? They actually played a, a pretty yeah. decent team. Um, so I, I would think that Georgia would still be number one. And I still think Georgia's win Georgia's win over Tennessee was just as impressive as what Ohio State did, but Georgia was at yeah. home, so I do take that into account. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you could definitely debate who's won. You know, you could go back and forth with one and two, and then TCU, I think, is pretty clearly going to be three, and then USC is going to be four, and then yeah. Ohio State's probably going to be sitting at five, sitting there going, okay, you know, if, if something happens here with, with somebody, mainly USC. Um, I, th- I think if Ohio State – if you're an Ohio State fan – you probably dislike USC anyways, but you're probably going to dislike them even more this week and, and be cheering against them. See, like I'm, I'm torn right now on two things. One, does Ohio State, who w- was at home, had everything perfect from the weather, home field advantage, quorums out for Michigan, and you get blown out. Uh, and you made Michigan look like they could actually throw the football. Like, do they deserve to be at five over – over Ohio, or excuse me, Alabama, who, you know, listen, I don't think either two of them deserve to be in the playoffs at the end of the day, uh, which brings me to like my next point. Like, I think the four teams in there right now, Georgia, Michigan, TCU, USC, should be the four teams in the playoff. To me, it's unfair that Ohio, no matter State, what. And Michigan, Ohio State and Alabama get to stay at home while these other teams that have proven it have to go out there and play another game. Like, do we have a world in that case where TCU and USC could lose but still make it, or is this like essentially a play-in game for both of them? Okay, so here, answer this question then for me. If that's the way you feel, if USC loses this weekend, who are you putting in the college football playoff then? Who's your top four teams? I I think, to me, I still think USC. I think USC, to me, has proven enough through their schedule, because I'm a believer right now, when I look at the college football landscape, that the SEC is the number one conference. I think the Pac-12 is the number two conference. I think the Big Ten and Big 12 are kind of together right there. And then the ACC. Like, I think what I've seen from the Pac-12 this year is like, man, if you can get through that gauntlet to get to 11-1, you have a one, uh, uh, you lose by one point on the road against Utah in a very emotional football game. And say it's another close game. Say Utah wins by three points again. I still think I've seen enough from USC to say you guys deserve to be in the playoff. And I think TCU, regardless of what happens versus Kansas State, I think Kansas State actually wins the game but doesn't take the fact away that you went 12-0 and in the Big 12 this year, I think both teams should, at the end of the day should be in it because I have not been well, impressed with Alabama. And then Ohio State got blown out by, by Michigan at home. Like, yeah. why do they deserve well, I think, with their schedule I, I this think year to get couple, in? There's a couple things. TCU is a different animal for me because TCU already yes. beat Kansas State. So that, this yeah. is a rematch. Um so if they if TCU lost, like I just I, I think they're going to be good regardless. I think one through three are good regardless. But one of the things I actually said to, to Reese at lunch, and we having lunch, I was like, all these teams that are sitting at one, two, and three, um, you know, they already can say my body of work is clearly better than everybody else's. And but I have to play another game. That's not my fault. Like I, I, it's not my fault. I'm sitting in this position. I have to play another game that any one of those other teams could lose as well. Here's where you lost me a little bit. What do you what are you hanging your hat on? What are you are remotely, remotely telling me that Alabama belongs in this conversation? What did they do to remotely put them even even slightly in that debate in that conversation? They 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 haven't. That's why I said neither team deserves to get in there at the end of the day. Like I think you could throw if you wanted to throw Tennessee in the conversation. You know, Tennessee beat Alabama, Tennessee beat LSU, two teams that they, why is, if Alabama is in the conversation to be potentially at five tonight, five or six, why isn't Tennessee the team that beat them in that same conversation? Is it because Hendon Hooker's out? Is that why? I think because they got blown out. The committee stipulated that they, 
Yeah, the committee stipulated years ago when they inst- instituted the committee, they said injuries are taken into account. So I think that's yeah. one thing that's 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 kind of a big deal, obviously, with them. But I, but I do think they've also – you've also seen the body of work throughout the years. If you get blown out, like, you usually fall down the ladder. And they got blown out by South Kakalaka. Yes. So – I think that was yeah. a big, a big slap in the face. That, but Ohio State just deal. got blown out by just, Michigan. Yeah, they got they got blown. They didn't get blown out like that, and it was Michigan. They got embarrassed. So, and and here's the thing: if they did get embarrassed, but if you're a football person, and listen, I thought Michigan was more physical. I thought Michigan was the better team. Now the yep. Corm thing spooked me out. Like the Corm thing definitely. When I, I didn't want to pick, I, I talked myself out of picking Michigan when I said all year long. I thought Michigan was the more physical, was the better team. But the thing is, you know, Michigan made a couple of huge plays in the first half that were explosive plays mm-hmm. that, you, you know, as well as I do, you don't make those plays very often. Those aren't plays that you count yeah. on. Like, and then the second half, they ran the football effectively. Like, I, I don't think, I don't look at that game like I look at Tennessee getting the doors blown off of them in South Carolina. Tennessee is a one-sided football team. Tennessee has, has a great offense that's elite. They don't have a good defense at all. When I look at you, when I look at Ohio State, I think Ohio State has a really good offense. I think they have a good defense, not great, not elite. So, it's it's it, here's what things that happen. It's all a beauty contest in the end. It's do you like the base? Yeah. Do you like them legs, or do you like the treble? What is your thing? What, how do you, how do you get down? What is what is what, what is what makes you comfortable? What is what makes well, you? Well, man, how do how do you how do you don't view, ever how do you view losses then? Like you, you talk about blowouts, and obviously the Ohio State game versus Michigan it was somewhat of a, a runaway, and, and, and I would say pretty embarrassing. Alabama's and everyone's like, oh, they could have lost more games, but they didn't. They ended up, they did win those games versus Texas, uh, and they did win another close game, and then their losses were pretty damn close. There was two points. They make the field goal, they win the game versus Tennessee. They stop the two point conversion, they win the game versus LSU. I mean, one score games, one point game, four four total points is what Alabama is not undefeated for right now. Does it matter how I love you hearing win or that? Lose I, love, that I love when you do that. I'm just asking. I'm what I'm asking. Do like, does it matter? I love what, well, I mean, okay, but here's the thing you say that, and also Alabama's one play away from losing to AM, one play away from losing yes. to Texas, yep. could have lost to Ole Miss. So don't give me that crap. It's a body of work deal, first of all. Like, first yep. first of all, metrics are going to go to you. How good is your offense? How good is your defense? Your body of work. Have you looked at Alabama one time this year, watched them, and be like, that, that that's a great team? No. No, not one time. No. no. I look at Bryce Young, and I go, that no, dude's 100%. filthy. That dude's unbelievable. Yes. He's so good. Defensively, they've mm-hmm. underperformed like crazy. Offensively, they don't have the weapons even remotely on the outside like they used to. Or do they have a passing game or system in place that they've that they've been able to build throughout the season? Any kind of chemistry to make you fear them whatsoever. So, you know, it's interesting. It's just like Clemson. You know, weeks and weeks ago, we're talking about Clemson. I'm like, they're okay. They're pretty good on offense, and they're pretty good on defense. But there's nothing great about them. So to answer your question is, wh- what do you have that separates you from everybody else? Your body of work obviously comes into it. Analytics comes into it. Like, how good are you with metrics wise? Because the computers love Texas for the longest time. But I'm like, wait a minute. Texas, yeah. when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. And Texas repeatedly showed mm-hmm. us who they were throughout the season. And I'm like, yeah, I know they got the best talent probably in the Big 12, but I ain't picking them anymore. I said that late in the season. Yeah. I'm like, I'm done with picking Texas. I'm picking, I'll give me TCU. Give me anybody who plays Texas. Like, because I just don't, they'll find a way to lose the football game. So listen, it's not an exact science. I get it. But I just, the Bama thing is, okay, yeah, they got a couple close losses. They also got a couple close wins. Who the heck is Bama beat that you're impressed with, by the way? No. I'm, I'll, 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 frame, I'll frame it like this, but who's, who's besides Penn State, who has Ohio State really played this year too? They've played At two least. games. Notre Dame, Notre, Dame's, and, Notre Dame's a good win. I would say a great win. I would say that's like a, you know, a normal Alabama win right now. But Ohio State's beat Penn State, congratulations. But then you you lost at home to Michigan. So, like to me, it goes back to what the original statement was for me. I don't think either team deserves to get in. I still think a, a, a I think you and I both agree. Georgia, Michigan, TCU are in. Those three are locked, regardless of what happens this weekend. USC is the big one that everyone's going to focus on on Friday night. I'm in the belief that regardless of what happens, because if it's a close game, they get blown out by Utah. Different story. But if it's a close game and you lose a one score game. I still think USC's body of work is superior to Ohio State's body of work who got to sit at home this weekend and not play a football game. And I, and I think maybe I like your argument and I like what you're saying it from because 
I, I like what you're saying is you feel like the Pac-12 is a really, really, really strong conference. And so yes. I, I think that's where you're coming from. I, I might not necessarily – like, I don't think Utah's a good team. I don't at all. I, I don't – I don't look at Utah and see anything discernible. They lost to they lost to Florida in the swamp. Yeah. Florida, mm -hmm. who is very ungood. Okay, we can call it whatever you want. They're ungood. They're not good at all. So I don't look at Utah. I think Oregon State's a very. I think they're a good team for what they can be. They're physical. They run the ball, but they're like they're not a great team by any stretch of the imagination. So I maybe I don't look at the Pac-12 in the same breath as you look at the Pac-12. I don't think they're the second best conference. I would put. Literally, I think the Big 12, the Pac-12, and the, the Big 10, like at least the Big 10 have a couple of really, really good teams at the top. But, but besides that, like I don't see a lot of greatness in any of those. I don't see a lot of greatness in college no. football this year, period. But obviously there's a, there's a no. few conferences where you at least – you got your LSUs who are – they're good teams. They're not great teams either, but they're teams that have more talent than 90% of teams in the country that can still beat you. So no. – I think that might be where we differ a little bit. Is well, I don't the SEC's the down too, the though. Do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think all. I think I think all kind of just. Down. I think the SEC. You look. I mean, look at the West this year. I mean, the West and the SEC took a significant drop. Um, I think the East is good. Obviously, South Carolina emerging as a contender in Tennessee has elevated that side of the SEC. But I think from top to bottom, the SEC is nowhere as dominant as they've been in the years past. And I think it goes back to what you said. Like this year, if you're a Michigan fan, a USC fan. Uh, a TCU fan, like you can win a national championship this year. Like there isn't a dominant conference, a conference that is head and heels better than anyone else. And I don't think there, there's a football team that necessarily so is like, we can give conference? you the natty. I, 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 or as good as what we've seen in years past. I think the SEC is still the cream of the crop. I think the players are better than the SEC. I think the coaches are better than the SEC. But I think from top to bottom, I don't think the SEC has been as good as they've been in years past. No. Maybe not, but you got four or five teams in the SEC that they're obviously – like you go take Alabama and you put them in another conference, they're probably going to win that conference. I mean yeah. – I, I, Well, let's I have that the, conversation I think then. The SEC's clearly if – you put, If you put Alabama in the Big Ten and you replace Ohio State's schedule and have Alabama play, what would they be? And then if you flipped it over, what would Ohio State be with Alabama's schedule? Would Ohio State beat Tennessee at Tennessee – would they beat LSU night at night and in Baton Rouge? Yeah, I think it'd be an interesting debate. Um, well, the one thing I do think is I, I do think Alabama would easily be, have. I think Alabama would have Ohio State's record. I would be I'd yes. be confident in saying that they would be a at most probably a one loss team. Um, but I, I don't know what Ohio State would be with that because. Because, you know, you're breaking in a new defense. I think Ohio State's secondary is extremely questionable. They're going to have, mm. you know, if, they're, if they get in the playoffs, they're going to have a tough time covering people. They, they struggle to cover Michigan's passing attack that isn't great either. So I, I don't – I think that further shows you that the SEC is stronger than you probably thought it was or probably than we think it is. But um, I, I think those, those, are, those are fun debates, man. I love, I love being able to do those yeah. kind of things and just try to – randomly select those teams but i mean if you look at ohio state i think it's important to keep in mind notre dame going in this week was a top 15 team uh they mm -hmm. they that game was never that game was not competitive notre dame, Michigan, ohio state was never in and worry, worried about losing that football game no. ohio state beat the brakes off of penn state in the end it was a close game for three quarters they beat they beat the slot out of them and they beat them at penn state which is again the hardest thing to do in college football is to go on the road so they at least have two quality wins they at least have two things you can point to that are pretty dang good. The, the committee absolutely is going to look at quality wins. Quality wins is important. Quality, the strength of record is going to be important. All that stuff comes into play. So that's where you start talking, comparing Ohio State and anybody else, whether it be a one-loss USC, um, whether, and obviously they're ahead of them, right? one a two-loss Alabama, all those people. I think it's going to stack up pretty well because of, because of having the Penn State win and having the Notre Dame win on the resume. All right. Well, we will get more of your thoughts tonight. Make sure y'all tune in to watch David on ESPN. I want to flip it real quick uh, before we let you go to the coaching carousel, which is now in full go. Uh, your your initial thoughts on two of the big hires there at Auburn with Hugh Freeze and then Matt Rule there. And even let's throw Luke Fickle in there. I know you're probably a big fan of Luke Fickle yeah. and what he's done at Cincinnati. Your initial thoughts, those, th those three big hires, Wisconsin, Nebraska, and then at Auburn. 
Well, I, I think you know, the first one that happened obviously was 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 uh, was going obviously Nebraska. And, and when you when you look at Nebraska and you look at Matt Rule and what he's accomplished, Matt Rule's a program builder. Matt Rule built a program out of Temple that was in the doors in the cellar for forever. Matt Rule went mm-hmm. to Baylor when Baylor was in a bad, bad way, you know, fresh off of all the stuff that happened with Bryles and and took him and built a program. Matt Rule can take people and develop them and make, you know, three star, four star, three stars, four stars. I think that's really, really important for Nebraska. Nebraska's not going to get the best of the best. That Those days are gone. Yeah. They're not going to do that. They need to be a program that can program build that can be physical um that can win that kind of brand really in the big 10 so i think it's a really really good hire i think satterfield's a good hire for his oc too that he took from south carolina i think that's a good good start um for him when i look at um hugh freeze i know hugh freeze has the background that people point to in what happened he also has the background of beating alabama a couple times when he was with Ole miss he has the background of being a player's coach that can recruit he has the background of, of developing his players. He has a track record of developing quarterbacks, no matter who they are, what they are, where they're from, what kind of style they are. He can take them and he can be successful. I think Auburn's a tough place to be successful. I can't sit here and tell you that he's going to be successful because there's so many chefs in the kitchen at Auburn. And until that changes, like, I don't know that anybody can be successful. So mm-hmm. I can't sit here and give him a stamp and say, this is a phenomenal hire This because a lot has to go right. I, I think he'll, he'll I, I don't, th- I don't look at, I don't look at his past and say he doesn't deserve another job. Dude, we're all screwed up, okay? We all got jacked up closets. We all got things we've done that are stupid. I think with this, I think you learn a lot from it. I think he's learned a lot from it. He's proved what he can do at Liberty. And then uh, who was the third one we talked about? Oh, Fickle. Oh, Luke Fickle, okay. baby. Fickle. It's it's important. Pickle. That, did you, say, I, I, did I you just say Pickle? No, I said Fickle. I mean, I can say oh, pickle if you want me to. Luke Pickle. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, I think, I think it's important. I think it's important the timing. Like, I, I think Luke Pickle got out of Cincinnati and, and went to, yeah. you know, where he's going, to, where he's going to a job that he's know he's going to have plenty of finances, plenty of support. They're in the uh, the Big Ten. You know, the future of Cincinnati is is a little bit differently. You know, you go into the Big Twelve, and right now he plays at Cincinnati. He's used to having better players and. Um, you know, builds it. He's got that physical, tough brand, the way he mm-hmm. builds it. So I think going to Wisconsin, it fits. Um, listen, it's still going to be hard to beat Ohio State and, and now Michigan that they got rolling. But I think Luke Fickle will bring uh, Wisconsin back to what we're accustomed to Wisconsin being. And that's being bullies, being physical, you know, and being guys that, and, and being the next team in the Big Ten. Not not all these yeah. other teams that sporadically pop up and the Big Ten West is like spinning the wheel of destiny every year. Like who's the, who's going to win that side of the division? And I think, you know, Luke Fickle can take that, develop it. If he hires a good staff, he's got he's got now good experience. I, I think he's I think he's a pretty good hire, too.